All right, welcome to today's episode of Tomorrow's Leader, where we dive deep on all things related to leadership. We are now in episode seven. These are flying by. We've had some fantastic guests on in these last few episodes. We have more to come. I think I have five more booked over the next couple of weeks, so I will be busy bringing you the best of the best from all kinds of leaders in all different industries. We got a great show for you today. By the way, I will address, I know some of you have watched this on YouTube, which these are available on YouTube, not just podcast. Uh, and I got a comment. Somebody asked me out of concern if I was aware that the plant behind me seems to have died or dying. I've checked it out. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. I assure you he's not. He's just resting or hibernating, but I have watered him and trying to bring him back to a nice, healthy place. Uh, but thank you for uh, for the concern. Uh, in all seriousness, we've got lots of stuff going on. We've got a beautiful day outside today. We're obviously in an unbelievably unique period of time and really one like none of us have ever experienced before, uh, certainly in our lifetimes and probably will never again, hopefully. But this brings all kinds of questions around the topic of leadership. And we've talked a lot about the fact that leadership is not just what people think it is, which is leading other people, but leadership is influence, and the most important person that you will ever, ever influence is by far yourself. So we're going to talk not only about leading other people, but also leading yourself through these tough times, which no doubt these can be really, really challenging times because they push us in areas mentally and emotionally that we haven't been in or haven't been in a long time, and a lot of different emotions coming in together to play against each other at once. So I want to talk about, and I've had the privilege of being able to talk to dozens and dozens of leaders over even the last week and pick their brain, some of the things that they're doing and what they're working on with themselves and with their teams. And I want to bring to you some of the best things that I've heard, and we're going to talk about them today in today's episode. We'll cover five of them. I've put together a list of about 10 um, uh, that uh, I want to cover over the course of a couple of these podcasts, and I'll give you some opportunities at the end to, to learn more. But I want to talk about the five that really hit home to me most. Um, one of the first things that I think comes up is just the notion that as a leader, we need to, or I need to have answers in order to be in a position to lead others. We've heard the saying that knowledge is power. Uh, knowledge certainly may give us confidence and it may give us some level of ability to influence people. It certainly gives them the ability to act and make decisions when they have more information and we can provide that. That's great. But there are situations like now where leaders don't have the answer. Nobody knows what's going to happen moving forward or how long this situation is going to last or how bad it's going to get or what the ripple effect is going to be in all different areas of life and business and society. The biggest thing and most important thing that a leader can do is communicate. In a period of time like this, you cannot communicate enough. The best leaders I'm finding right now are communicating four times what they probably normally communicate with their teams. And honestly, whether it's an email or text, but certainly a phone call or a video chat or something is even better. But increasing that level of communication only adds to someone's feeling of comfort, security, and stability in a period of time where they might not have that otherwise. So the first thing that you can do as a leader is increase that uh, level of communication. Give people a sense of where things are headed. If you're running a business, what's happening with the business. Bring people together in an office setting. They're used to the water cooler or coffee pot uh, talk and being able to associate with other people and see what they're doing, hear what they're doing. Give people a means of being able to do that and understand what's happening and what's going on because all they see is what's going on sometimes in their world, their immediate world, which is their house slash office. And uh, you need to, to uh, increase that level of communication. Secondly, which really ties in perfectly to this is connection. Uh, bring people together. Some of the best leaders I have seen and, and know have done an exceptional job of bringing people together in a period of time where it's really easy to feel isolated. We all feel it. Everybody feels isolated more than they've ever been. So we've got to go through those extra steps. I've heard some very creative ways to do that, whether that's, there are a lot of people that have never done Zoom to, uh, calls or video chats or go-to meetings before or Skype that are now doing that, right? I've heard Zoom or go-to meetings uh, for birthday parties or games, board games, um, leaders 
doing happy hours, virtual happy hours, whatever you can do to bring everybody together and give them a sense of community, that gives, again, people a feeling of safety, security, optimism, hope, and that's exactly what you want people to be feeling at this point. One of my favorite leaders uh, that I've ever gotten to know, Jim Meehan in Philadelphia, runs a fantastic organization. I was talking to him earlier today, and he was saying how important it is to, as a leader, not only let people hear your voice, but let people see your face, because that in of itself sometimes adds comfort, right? Not just the voice, but a leader's face and and uh, presence, more of a presence, makes them feel more connected and more confident and more comfortable. So those are the first two. Number three, really critical in this period of time. As a leader, we have to learn how to adapt and pivot in an environment like this. The best businesses will, in my opinion, come out stronger as a result of what's going on right now. No doubt this is testing and trying and and uh, adding challenges to businesses and individuals in a way that's never happened before. But I've seen some really creative things and fast-acting steps that business owners have taken that have been tremendous. And you think about there's some areas in businesses that we never really thought about. Wow, okay, what would we do without them? But there's all kinds of businesses that certainly have made some changes. You've got gyms where people have been reliant or addicted to going into a gym physically to get their workouts, and now gym owners are taking some steps to bring the workouts to the home, having virtual classes and allowing people to still feel a little level of connectedness and accountability and instruction and training even in their living room. Uh, you've got other places, grocery stores, which is, have adapted very well. I've got a grocery store down the street that identified the needs of its customers and have adapted to that. So they put certain hours there for high-risk individuals, individuals over 60, where between 7 and I think 9 in the morning, they're the only ones allowed in that food store to help maintain a safe level of social distancing so that they're not crowded together in a otherwise crowded time of day for that supermarket. They've done things that make those customers feel valued, feel important, certainly feel more safe and comfortable. And that will pay dividends after all this dust is settled. That business will will certainly benefit from uh, making those gestures. You've got other businesses also. I think about you know hair hair barber shops and hair salons. Uh, you know I'm thinking you know I got to get a haircut at some point. We're trapped in here, and you know two three four months goes by. If that's the case, uh, we're going to all be looking pretty shaggy, right? We've got hair salons that have done some really cool things with. Uh, even uh, taking the salon, everything they can to bring it into the home. So I know of one salon that sent um, uh, hair dye or, or coloring treatments to the house of their customers and done virtual sessions where they've taught them online how to professionally dye their hair. You've got certain barbers that are coming out or hairstylists to the home. Um, you've got all kinds of things that they're doing or maybe limit you know, one or two people per time into the barbershop. You've got all things that businesses have done to adapt. The bottom line is a leader. You have to help your people, whatever industry you're in, adapt. Because if you hit the pause button on business, that will easily become a stop button. And then that's very, very hard to reroute and change. Uh, and a three-month period of time could easily affect a full year. Important to keep the business going and moving and adapting and pivoting is an incredible uh, part of this. I think after all this is done, we'll look back on this, and there will be some real positives that come of this. And we will look back. I know Steve Jobs always used to say, you can't connect the dots looking forward, but you can always connect them looking back. I think this is one of those things we will look back and say there were new ways of doing business because we were forced to think outside the box. We were forced to be creative. We were forced to think about changing circumstances and how that affected our old business models. And I think a lot of new things will come of this. And if we push ourselves and really force ourselves out of the comfort zone, those great ideas are gonna come out there. So as a business leader, that's one real important thing that you can do for sure. The last thing. We're all in a period of time where we're not running around, we're not in a car, we're not traveling, we've got a whole lot more time that's in our schedule now, available to us, and the question is, what are you doing with that extra time? And I know some people are not doing much with it or anything with it, and the smart people are using it as an opportunity to grow and to develop 
personally and professionally. So we all have things that we have wanted to do at one point or another that we just never seem to have the time for. Well, now you have the time for it, right? Whether that's picking up another hobby or doing something different that you've never done before. But what I'm talking about really is investing in your own growth. The smart leaders are the ones that are going to be investing in themselves. I don't care what that looks like. Maybe that's hiring a coach. Maybe that's reaching out to people and talking to them and picking their brain. Uh, There's a lot of people out there that would love to mentor people. Maybe that's you mentoring someone. Maybe that's reading books. Or like me, uh, if you don't necessarily like reading the book, you like listening to them, get uh, get Audible and listen to as many books as you can. I set it on one and a half times speed so I can listen to as many books that much faster. And believe, believe me, your brain learns to assimilate all that stuff a lot faster and you can read faster that way. Whatever it takes, read articles, write articles, teach people, do whatever you can now to invest in your growth. And I promise you that will pay enormous dividends when the dust settles. So those are your quick fixes. Five of the things that I found to be the most important, critical things that people can be doing during this period of time. These are things that I've gotten from my colleagues all across the country that I've spoken to over the last uh, week or so. Uh, What I also want to encourage you to do, each podcast episode, we're going to be going into more stuff. I'll cover some other topics next time. I've put together a full list of these things that I have uh, learned from leaders over the last week and what they're doing right now. If you'd like that, I'll give you an easy way to do this. You can text the word LEADER, L-E-A-D-E-R, to this number, 617-393-393. 5383. Again, text the word leader to 617-393-5383. And I will send you the list of those 10 things that top leaders are doing now in this environment. So hope you found this helpful. Be sure if you did to like it, subscribe to it, and also share it with your friends. Add some comments in the comments link, and we will see you next time. Thank you very much. Have a great day. 